Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. Wait for the drop. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. On the day of God. It's Sunday. It's Sunday and we want some girthy gains on the day of God. Before I begin, I do just want to say this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. Use your own brain to trade, not mine. Um, apart from that, let's get on with the TA because there's a lot of stuff to talk about today. Obviously, the breakout is nigh for a signal, right? Um, the last few signals haven't been good. They've been, um, to be blunt, to be honest, they've been bad, really. Uh, we're waiting and we're due a good signal. Um, and we know with this strategy, we can get a lot of losses in a row, right? We've had before uh, as many as eight losses in a row and come back and still been like irreversibly profitable, right? So um, the way this goes, is we could still be expecting a loss here but we have had a few losses in a row now so uh, I'm uh, part of me is expecting a win here right um, but let's not get our hopes up let's just play the strategy as it comes um, in, in terms of an update on the, the transparent account here it started with 400 and now it is on uh, I believe 213 something like that uh, I just realized that you guys can't see the bottom of the screen so let me just grab that up there boom um, with with uh, the breakout machine I did just want to say something to you guys before uh, actually uh, we'll get on with that in a minute Let's just start with the uh, the analysis to begin with, right? Because that's what you're here for. That's what we want. What way is Bitcoin going to go? That's what you're here for, right? So, um, yeah, if we bring up the WAD machine here right now, you can see that basically, basically, guys, it's uh, it's above the price action channel here. So that's, that's generally bullish here. But uh, I wouldn't just go ahead and long just yet. Just because if you are following the WAD here, there is uh, two pretty substantial moving averages above us here. Um, if I am correct here in saying that that's the 200 maybe, the white 200 at the top, that could be wrong. Uh, 200 here, 200 EMA, boom, oh no, that's the purple. So I believe the 200 SMA is gonna be the, uh, the white one, yeah, okay, so that is the 200, right? So these are the 200 moving averages. These are obviously very important moving averages. Why has that gone red? What, what is that? What's happened here? Anyway, um, let me just refresh the page because uh, I haven't actually started my computer in like maybe four days. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's a probably a little bit glitchy in itself, right? Uh, so yeah, with the technical analysis here, we can see that the one machine is putting out some pretty significant supports and resistances. Uh, the, the two main ones being obviously um, 9,800 here, and uh, the bottom one naturally would be uh, 8,900, right? Uh, the other thing I want to do, just if we're talking about raw analysis here, is uh, to look right at the blue boxes indicator. I'm gonna get this up for you right now. Just gonna double check you can see everything. Yeah, you're all good there. Um, ignore the bottom bit. That's not really important just yet. But um, on the top here, you can see that essentially we've got these ranges plotted out here. I did say it does look like we're gonna dump. I have been short uh, in cash, not on a leverage, right? I have been short in cash since around 9,900 to kind of uh, 97.50, that kind of area. Uh, was my full cash out. Uh, so essentially I've just been in cash th this whole way down. It's not really a problem here. If we do go up, uh, we'll most likely get a signal from the breakout machine anyway. Um, apart from that as well, the, the hash back test ribbon thing here is, uh, is is also an interesting thing to look at as well, right? Because we can see that uh, we rarely go under this line here. And when we do, uh, it's just coming out of a bear market usually, right? Uh, so uh, the way this would work here is we're just by this line. Obviously, we've had the halvening. Since the halvening, we're basically just colossally dumped here, as you'd naturally expect. This is done on mining, right? So people aren't going to be mining as much. Uh, they're, they're obviously not going to get as much rewards from mining, uh, so that's going to be lower, right? And this is an indicator that's very, very accurate at predicting the start of a bull run, right? You can see this long here, uh, and it's still long technically, right? Uh, so apart from that, let's take a look at uh, this this round of blue boxes generally in anyway, right? So I did say we're coming down. A lot of people went insta-bear from this point and said, yep, we're going to crash to 77. I knew differently. I did say, guys, uh, it's, there's potential to crash to 77, 75 area, but we won't stay down there for more than a week. That's my opinion anyway. That's not financial advice, guys. Um, but uh, this, this indicator generally has been very, very accurate at predicting the bottoms since the dawn of time for Bitcoin, right? And you can see here, we rarely get below it. And when we do, it is just a small trap usually, right? So, uh, uh, with this being all the way up here, we could potentially be somewhere near the bottom right now if we don't get another colossal crash, right? This this uh, is kind of 
pushed aside for this moment in time simply because of the COVID crash, right? Everything was dumping. Horrifically, might I add, right? So uh, with this, it wasn't actually a, a, a valid thing because fundamental... St uh, fun fundamentals took over here, right? So uh, using fundamental analysis, you could be like, okay, yeah, that, well, that's that's a good crash there for fundamental analysis to, to kind of um, go around, right? <coughs> Sorry, I'm still waiting for my coffee to hit me, guys. But uh, saying that, we have got another long signal here. Uh, we it did get stopped out here because I guess this didn't expect to go that low either. Um, <coughs> so, yes. Uh, it could potentially go way up from here, like we could be talking like this could be the bottom, right? But uh, in, in the past with Bitcoin, we do like to tread along this line quite a lot, right? And, and maybe trap below it a few times. So uh, we could still be up for something uh, something like this, uh, where we could just ride up this and go up. And I did release a video back in, I think it was November, where I was using this round of blue boxes. And I said, basically what I expect to happen was uh, essentially just to tread along this line, not really break it. And obviously we did break it thanks to the COVID crash, but I was expecting some kind of uh, rounded kind of thing here with these tops, right? Um, and then uh, we'd have this coming up, bringing us into a kind of uh, coiled up zone here, right? And then when that breaks, that's when you get the, the huge mega move uh, potentially towards the upside, right? I would uh, probably lean way more towards the upside than downside, but Bitcoin hasn't really uh, been at this price before our blow off top, right? So it's, it's kind of, um, it's an interesting one. Uh, we, we were in price discovery. We've been in bear market for like two years now, I would say, just lower high after lower high on the longer time scale anyway, right? Um, but with this coming in and us respecting this support, it's actually a very, very good sign that we could be in for some bullish action here. And uh, guys, that is a fact. Okay, the music just died as I said that, <laughs> it's just the worst. Um, but moving on here, yeah, there is potential measure moves all the way up to 16,000, even as high as, uh, well not measure move, but if we did get another blow up, blow off top like we uh, like we expected to do, sorry, we, if we did get another blow off top like we did with 20,000, um, your, your next kind of top area would be uh, as high as maybe 26,000. Uh, the maximum high I would say would be the top of this guy, which would be 70,000, right? If Bitcoin gets to 70,000, uh, that's obviously crazy. Um, uh, one of the reasons for that would be inflation, right? Because everyone does expect this to go up eventually, but no one really understands why. They're like, Bitcoin's going to moon eventually. 10 years time, it's going to be worth way more. But uh, the actual value of Bitcoin will just be dollar value to um, to kind of the inflation rate of the dollar value, right? So if the dollar inflates like five times uh, over the next 10 years, then yeah, uh, Bitcoin's going to be worth t at least five times uh, as much as it's worth now, right? But the actual value isn't going to change because obviously the inflate, the value of the dollar's gone down, right? So uh, that actual value isn't actually good. Uh, a good analogy that I like to say for this is if Bitcoin's worth a million dollars and a pint of milk's 15 grand, then Bitcoin's not worth that much, right? So uh, just bear that in mind going upwards here, but it is looking good. This is a potential bottom and this could just be um, the result of people squeezing this to the downside when it is a deflationary asset, right? Which means it doesn't inflate, it deflates and uh, one Bitcoin's going to be worth more than something that inflates uh, something like uh, the dollar or anything like that, right? So, with that being said, it's time to move on. Let's take a look at the WAD again here. And I did want to just bring up all of the supports here on the WAD machine. If you don't have the WAD machine, uh, feel free to join t.me slash algobox where you'll get a two-week free trial for free. It's basically free money, guys. So, two weeks for free. Go do that. And I just realized, guys, that it's Sunday. Is it Sunday today? Yes. So, we do have a giveaway today. But I haven't actually uh, prepared for this video, so I don't have all the names in the giveaway. But I will do this in the Telegram afterwards, right? And I will comment on this video to tell you guys who won. So uh, if you did win, congratulations. I'll be doing that after this video. Um, and I'll let you guys know in the Telegram group if you won as well, right? And again, if you have already got a subscription, whether it's a, a trial or you've bought a subscription, I know a few of you guys have, uh, well, a lot of you guys have year subscriptions now, so good job for that. Uh, obviously, with the breakout machine, it does take uh, a, a bit longer time to, to kind of get the profitable runs going but uh, a year subscription for that is is pretty fantastic because you're giving it a lot of time to do that right and then uh, hopefully we, we will make the the dirty big buck banks right so uh, coming up here we have the what machine I'm, I'm gonna explain all about this uh, to begin with just what I think will happen with Bitcoin based around the one machine and then I'm gonna go into the breakout machine and basically uh, show you guys 
the strategy going forward with that. Uh, and uh, I will also brief you on the future of the breakout machine because we're on the, the version 3.1 right now, but I do have plans for the version 4. But it is going to be a, a rough one in terms of getting to that point, right? Uh, and, and we'll explain that in a minute. But to begin with, let's start with the WAD. We've got the WAD here, and uh, obviously we've got big big resistance lines above us. We've got uh, 9300 being a resistance line. If we, do, if we do break this, I would take this as a breakout here, uh, this highest wick here. Uh, 9307, somewhere around there. If we break, if we break that, I will take this as a breakout. Um, but just if you are being a bit more cautious here, I would say that you you want to get over this moving average, this 200 here. Uh, these are both 200, and they're quite far apart. So what I would expect to happen here, if we do go up, is something along the lines of this. But with that being said, that might stop us out as well, right? Because if we get this big move up and then the breakout machine gives us a long and then we bounce off of this, uh, then we're obviously going to get stopped out uh, and then it's going to continue up, right? So it's in, in terms of manual trading uh, or hybrid trading, which is when you're using algorithms plus your own brain, um, then yes, it might be better to wait here. But if you are just using... Um, the algorithms, you're just following the strategy, and we know this strategy uh, is profitable if we follow it, right? Uh, and more news about that at the end of the video, but um, we know this is, is profitable over a few... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, we know it's profitable over a few a few uh, or a year's time, right? Which is good, the data is new, and the profit is huge, right? So even if we get a bad year here, we're, we're, like, we're, we're potentially in for a lot of profit, right? But uh, if you are just following the algorithm, you might have to just, uh, just stone, stone heart it through, just... Just take the losses here, guys, and wait for those wins, right? Don't risk anything that you're not willing to lose. And another analogy, I'm, go I'm banging out the analogies today, guys. The girthy analogies all over your face on the day of God. On the day of God. But uh, if, if you are coming up with an analogy here, I would say that the basically... Uh, I just lost my trail of thought, guys. Lost my trail of thought. But basically, yeah, I, I do think there is some upside here. But it it's just a case of, like... Um, just sticking through it, sticking through the losses and waiting for that streak of wins when we do start train, trending again in a direction, whether it is down or up, preferably up here, because if we do get uh, just just some bullish action here, some progressive action towards the upside, that uh, is 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 better because if we're in a long trade, our Bitcoin's gonna be worth more at the end, right? If we're in a short trade and then we make some Bitcoins, those Bitcoins we get at the end that we've leveraged, they will actually be worth less at the end of the trade because uh, obviously, it, we're selling, right? It's a short, it goes down, we make the money off the short, uh, and then the Bitcoins are worth less, right? So obviously, naturally, we want it to go up, we want it to break up to like 15k would be fantastic, but um, if that doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, it's okay, it's fine. Uh, that's just what I would expect to do this. I'm just going to throw up the blue here just to see what it does. I haven't really looked at this just yet. Interesting, actually. The first look on this, I will say that it does look like it is looking to break uh, towards the upside right now. It does look a lot more bullish than bearish here, and I can't lie about that. I, um, I prefer to, to, to be realistic and be bearish about Bitcoin because it has been going down for a long time, right? Uh, well, up and down, but more down than up, right? So... Um, yeah, I, I prefer to be bearish on an asset that's trending downwards, but um, I can't really hate this too much. We've broken over this resistance line, right? Uh, we've broken over this 50 moving average, this green guy here. Um, and what I would expect to happen next, if we do continue sideways, is to essentially uh, stay sideways and come down here and test this little guy here uh, as this comes up, as well as the price action channel as well. And then on that test would be a very nice area for a nice little macro long towards the upside, right? Uh, and you're just going to have to hold this through uh, as we hit these moving averages as well, right? Um, in terms of lower highs, it's not looking great here because we haven't actually beaten our last high on the hourly here. But it does look like we're close, it does look like we're trying, and we have broken over this resistance line as well, you can see coming down on the blue indicator, right? If you did want the blue indicator, all you gotta do is go to uh, Bitcoin Beats on Trading View, and basically, I'm, I'm gonna do this right now for you guys so you can see, you can essentially find it, wherever it is, where is it? Yeah, it's here, right? You can find it on my profile, and you can get this completely for free, forever, may I add, right? Um, and just add to scripts. Add to favorite scripts in the bottom right uh, when it comes up. And then you can just add it to your chart. Let me just uh, demo how you would do that. Uh, you've got your favorite scripts here. Uh, you would just type in blue. And then it will come up as your favorite scripts. If I can get this going. I don't think I favorited it though. No, I didn't favorite it. But it will come up here <laughs> when you do favorite it. Yeah, for me, it's in my scripts, obviously, because uh, it's my scripts. But uh, apart from that, yeah. 
That's how you would get that indicator. If, if you did just want all my other indicators as well for two weeks, t.me slash algobox, go do it. There's, there's a chat, there's a community, there's a lot of us in there just chilling and chatting, right? Talking about the Bitcoins, the bitties, right? Uh, apart from that, yes, we are above this resistance line. Uh, we do look like we're progressively, aggressively going towards the upside. But, um, again, caution with the wind here. If everyone's bullish, the, be the whales are just going to dump it on us. It's just facts, right? Um, there's some people sat in their high towers in China, just ready. There's a, there's a dump button, and they're just about to press it whenever we get uh, a certain amount of a bullish uh, anticipation towards the market, right? Um, sentiment is what it's all about, right? And you, you will notice as well with, with Bitcoin, and if you are in t.me slash algobox, you will notice that I'm usually on the opposite side. Everyone's like, I think it's going down. Uh, the other day, everyone was like, yo, I think it's going down to, uh, to, to 70 now. And I was like, no guys, like there's way too much support here. Um, and everyone's bearish. Everyone on Twitter was bearish. Everyone on Reddit was bearish. Everyone on TradingView was bearish. So, um, it's probably going up if everyone's bearish because that's what the big banks, the whales, the dirty, dirty, girthy, steal your money whales um, like to do, right? They like to take the money, they like to stop us out, they like to get it done. And then they're winning against us at the moment, but when we do get this streak of wins, it's going to be monumentally, um, irrecoverably profitable, right? Irrecoverably profitable. <laughs> uh, apart from that, yes. It's looking pretty good. It's looking uh, bullish towards the upside. Uh, I wouldn't just say long now, right now. Personally, for me, I'm not in a macro long. I, in my opinion, I've missed this opportunity to long so far. Uh, I should have. What I should have done here with uh, with this guy was long this. I said it was going down there. I said it was probably going to bounce, but I was away from the computer when we got down there. And we were down there for like not even an hour or something, right? Yeah, it was. It wasn't a, a long time here. Uh, to come up and we had this huge wick here right um if i can zoom in on this huge wick just to, in, in terms of price action in general a huge wick like this yes it's bullish but afterwards we had a huge wick towards the upside and then we started going down again so i was expecting a bit more of a jump here and, and maybe just a kind of a, a fluidity around this area before going up but we did just bounce and bounce up here i uh, in my opinion this is a little bit too high up for me to actually long um I'm, I feel like we are dead in the middle of the range. It doesn't make sense to long here. Um, I would rather short the top or long the bottom than just guess in the middle. But uh, with that being said, I will be following the breakout machine on that uh, on that account for you guys because that account isn't it isn't to to well obviously it is to make money but it isn't going to be my main source of income here. This this is actually just to prove to you guys that it works over a long period of time, right? So right now, yeah, we are like 50% down, 56 uh, no like 46% down. Um, but we are waiting for that string of wins, right? So yeah, we're just gonna keep doing that. And the reason I'm doing that is to just essentially prove that it works over a long period of time, right? That, that's the blunt way of doing it. You can follow it, you don't have to follow it. But uh, I've, I've put $400 in and I'm just gonna throw that out. That could go down to $20 and still come up and, and, and bang it towards the upside, right? But um, yeah, I will just continue to do that over the next few times, just for tr f full transparency, because as uh, a friend of mine, Crypto Crown, likes to say, he likes to say uh, that if you're, if you're a trader or an analyst or a YouTuber and you don't basically, you don't show your trades to anyone, you don't show your transparency to anyone, um, you don't show that you're losing, uh, Crypto Fund Manager, shout out to that guy. <laughs> that guy, unbelievable. That guy will basically upload two videos saying uh, it's going up and it's going down in a separate video and then he'll just delete the one that's wrong. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're not into all that. We want to be as transparent as possible. We want to prove to you guys uh, that this stuff works. Uh, so yeah, that's that's how I'm going to be doing this. Uh, with a dump here, a dump would actually likely come down to 91 again. Um, but if we do lose this, it could be a pretty horrific dump from then on, right? We've got another trend line coming in here. If I can just get rid of this on blue, uh, just get rid of the, the kind of convoluted boxes here. There we go. And we can just get look at the actual curved uh, linear, basically, trend lines here, right? So if we are looking at this, we can just see there are a couple supports coming in here. Just bring it towards the upside. If, if we did dump to that, uh, we could break it. But then we've got this support here as well, right? Uh, at 9,000. So this is looking pretty strong. Um, this indicator won't draw these lines unless there is actual, like, uh, possibility, high possibility of this actually being rejected. You can see here, right? Um, it's it's done pretty well here to predict this stuff. Um, so yeah, 
I'm, I'm happy with it. I like it. Uh, and again, it is free. Just head over to my trading view, right? Uh, apart from that, the wad here has... Uh, I did up the I, I did update this the other day and uh, we do have automatic supports and resistances drawn in as well You can see here. We've got a new one for this next hour We'll see how this goes. It's looking like it's gonna dump down to the price action channel But uh, if it doesn't and if we do hold this area, then uh, there's a lot of potential to go up from there, right? Uh, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about just to get rid of all that uh, for for a little bit is the breakout machine. The breakout machine here is uh, is an indicator that uses MACD volume spikes, uh, historical volatility percentile and SMA, and uh, thresholds for all of those things. And basically, I've back tested those all the way back to a year and a half. And because because volume changes over a long periods of time here, uh, a year and a half is actually pretty accurate back testing data because the volume won't have changed that much, especially after our blow off top. Uh, we're not losing traders. We're not really gaining traders. We're just kind of in the middle neutral zone here for for kind of volume and and uh, retail as well, right? So. Uh, these thresholds are actually pretty accurate right now. Uh, you can see that we are below the threshold and we do have a white background, which basically means there's a signal due. Sometimes this can last up to a week, but um, for now it's two days under. Um, and it, look, it, it, it is challenging this line right now. It is gonna get above there sooner rather than later. What we don't really want to see here is essentially uh, just, just, just going down to the bottom right if we go down to the bottom here which i don't expect to happen just because i'll explain in a minute but this vo historical volatility here is awfully low i've never i've barely seen it this low in my life um but yeah if we did go down here then we could get our pump and our volume could basically tap this line and then we go sideways and get stopped out that's not a good scenario um but it is a potential scenario here um but it is one of the less likely ones just because you can see here that the volatility has just been going sideways uh, we have just been going down volume has been dropping macd has been going down uh, we're, we're below the thresholds on everything right so this blue line is, is obviously the blue line's threshold once we get above this we'll get a signal uh this this white line is essentially, um, if we're above this in historical volatility and we get uh, the blue one going up, it won't give us a signal. And that's super important, guys. We have to be below this uh, with this white line for us to get a signal. And this white line is literally at zero right now. We've we've had no movement over the past few hours. You can see here at the top, um, literally just sideways dirty dirt action. So I would expect to break out literally any second to any um, any hour here for today. Again, it is a weekend, do expect it to be trappy, but it is also um, very, very low historical volatility. I rarely see it this low. You can see we can go back here uh, just throughout some recent history and we can see it rarely goes this low. And when it does get this low, we get huge moves to follow. So hopefully we can get some nice girthy gains on the day of God and, uh, and just basically pray for those girthy gains, okay? Cool, cool, cool. That is... That's not the video just yet, <laughs> but if you are enjoying the video, please give it a like. Uh, helps me out a lot. Leave a comment if you want to enter the giveaways every single week. All you got to do is comment on a video, and I'll give away one month subscription to uh, to, to to one lucky commenter, <laughs> right? Uh, and you get one ticket per video, right? So if you comment on one, uh, if you comment like 50 vid comments on one video, you're going to get one ticket. Just to throw that out there, um, but. Apart from that, go nuts. Just comment on any video for the past week. Uh, not not the past week now because the, the, the giveaway is over today. I'm doing it after this video, as I said. But if you do want to enter next week's video, just comment on any of my videos throughout the week and you'll get a ticket per video. Done. Cool. And you get access, if you win, to all of the indicators that I use to be a profitable trader. So uh, with that being said here, with that being said, uh, back to historical volatility, it is low. It's very, very low here. I do expect to break out. We are just kind of flirting with the breakout uh, as this hour will progress. Uh, and I've never really seen it like this. So it's, it's going to be interesting whether we'll just get an explosion towards the upside all over your face. Or we get a, a kind of gradual, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, parabolia uh, on, on this on this guy as we come up. And those are obviously the best moves to do it because we've got momentum coming into it. Uh, it's, it's, it's gaining momentum towards the upside, which is good to predict uh, and it's good to, to know when, when to get out as well, right? Uh, luckily, this indicator does get us out automatically. It will just get us out um, basically if HVP hits 100 or if, um, if the MACDs say, hey, we're going down now, and then that's good, right? So uh, we're, 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 we're up for something good here, and you might be wondering as well, why, 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 Hamilton, are you on the Bybit chart? Why are you not on Binance, right? Um, the, the reason being here for Bybit is 
just because the results are better on the back test, we actually wouldn't have got stopped out here. If I can just zoom out, if, if I can just zoom out here, <laughs> we wouldn't have got even any of these trades um, that would have stopped us out, right? So that would have saved us a lot, a lot, a lot of losses here. Uh, but uh, generally with the buy bit, it just looks better. Look, I've, I've tweaked all the parameters manually here and it just looks a lot better. Even, even the losses are small losses. Um, and there's less stop outs here, and the longs are just uh, either break evens or dirty girthy gains all over your face on the day of God. Um, apart from that, it just looks okay. It looks kind of profitable here. There are occasions where we've stopped out, you can see, uh, but not as bad as we've had for the past few weeks on the Binance chart. So I'm going to show you this, guys, uh, and then I'm going to show you the Binance chart just to see what you make of it, and you guys can let me know in the comments, or you can let me know in t.me slash algobox in the chat there, uh, which one you would prefer me to trade here, um, and, and which one you would prefer to follow, right? Because if you have access to it, uh, then you, you can choose which one you follow. Oh god, that looks awful, doesn't it? Um, with this, you can see that basically, as I was saying, it looks a lot worse, right? We, we would have caught this move, nonetheless, and we actually would have got a better exit there. But uh, afterwards, we're talking one, two, three, four, five losses, right? Uh, that's four stop outs in a row, and then a loss. Uh, so we're, we're kind of expecting a win here. I am still following uh, the Binance for now, but if you would prefer me to switch over to Bybit, uh, that makes sense as well, right? That also makes sense. If they're both long, I'm just going to give it a little long, um, but I, I will refer to these anyway, right? Um, one thing we could do as well, because these parameters are very different depending on the chart, um, we can make sure they match before we enter a trade here if it is a stop out. Uh, that's that's something to be kind of considerate of. You can see here we do get nice entries and nice exits, but um, the stop outs and the traps are just dirty. They're dirty, okay? So what we want here is just some consistency. And uh, that, that brings me on to the next thing I want to talk about here. So the next thing I'm going to talk about here is the actual indicator and the updates I want to give you guys uh, for this indicator because there is some important things to consider when, when uh, you are making or developing an indicator like this, right? Uh, and the, the main thing being that the thresholds will change over time, right? So this won't be accurate for 10 years, but it will be accurate for the last year because nothing's really changed in terms of volume for Bitcoin, right? We haven't had any major uh, engineering breakthroughs in terms of like uh, how many blocks we can add to the to, to whatever, right? Or how fast the transactions can be. Uh, we haven't had any major adoption here as well. So yes, I would expect the volume and the thresholds to stay the same over the past few years. Um, and after this, we might have got an influx of new new uh, new money into the market, but it's not nearly enough as much as the whales have got. They're, they're kind of winning this game. There's a no-lose game for them, so um, the volume probably won't change that much unless people just drop off, right? Uh, if, if people stop trading Bitcoin and, and Bitcoin uh, isn't that important in today's -to life, then this volume threshold is going to go down because the whales are going to basically need less volume to move it, right? So, uh, with that being said, what I'm basically planning for this is to essentially just, um, just, just have these thresholds moving over time. And one thing I thought about doing is having actually uh, a moving average for the volume over a long period of time, because that would actually act as our threshold um, for where we come down, right? Uh, or some kind of uh, average lows for this indicator. Uh, that would be an interesting one as well to explore. But the reason I am going to be exploring this isn't because uh, we need to, it's because the market's always changing, right? This should be okay for the next year or so, maybe even for the next five years. We don't really know. But, um, in terms of the actual future and f uh, feasibility for this working on one multiple assets and two uh, Bitcoin for the next decade or something, we need it to be uh, uh, f fluid. We need it to be changing uh, a lot of the time to what Bitcoin's doing as well, right? And if we can just nail that formula, that's money right there. That's uh, pretty much endless money. <laughs> so yes, that's what I'm going to be working on. That's uh, that's essentially what I'm doing. And the reason I'm doing it again isn't uh, isn't because uh, for for short term. It's more for long term. And the reason I'm doing it as well is because I've just discovered a new platform called called Tuned. Right? It's Tuned.com. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm just part of their little alpha thing, um, and I asked to be a part of it. So. They, 
they didn't even scout me out anyway. But uh, I really like what it is. It's basically a back testing platform. Um, Bitcoin, uh, sorry, TradingView, for example, will only let me back test for a year and a half with this setup, just because it uses a lot of memory. It's quite a high computational uh, indicator, right? So it's going to use a lot more of their RAM on their servers to figure stuff out, right? But uh, this new platform basically say. You've got free reign, we'll give you all of the data on Bitcoin for Bitcoin's history, go nuts. I was like, okay, cool, what do I do? And they, they were basically like, we've got, a, we've got our own version of PineScript, it's not as good, they're still working on it, um, so it could take months here for them to, to finish it up, but um, I've basically got to learn a new new type of code before they can put all of the commands and stuff in, into, into their thing from, from PineScript, right? Uh, and it's not easy for them to do either because PineScript is not open source. Um, it's like it has its own commands and features based on multiple tra uh, multiple coding engines, right? So um, I've basically learned PineScript from scratch. I, I haven't learned any other code. <laughs> so for me to go over onto a different engine and find out that all of the all of my code doesn't work there is kind of difficult. So my my main point here is it's going to take me some time to learn their coding engine. But I love this stuff, this is my passion, uh, I will do that, and uh, I, I will continue to work on this indicator, right? So, yes, it's profitable right now, uh, very, very profitable, to, to be frank, <laughs> right? But uh, for the future, it's, it's, it's feasible for maybe the next five, maybe three to five years, in my opinion, right? Before we get major developments in Bitcoin or whatever, right? Or in the space in general. Uh, if nothing changes, then cool! Uh, the, the indicator will stay profitable. But if, if big changes happen, then we're going to have to adjust the thresholds to something a bit better. Uh, and we can look back in Bitcoin's history to, to find those points as well, right? So it's not just, we're not just uh, going through the through the fog here with our hands open, like, <laughs> it's it's fine. We, we, can, we can relate whatever happens to what's happened in the past, right? If it goes up, we know the threshold's probably going to go up here. Um, but if it goes down, uh, we know the threshold's going to go down. So, yes, as we've been between like 7,000 and, I don't know, 12,000 for the past year or so, it, it does make sense to have the threshold around here. And, and unless we break those areas, I don't really see much changing for Bitcoin, um, generally, anyway. So, that's basically it. That's what I wanted to say with that. It's gonna take me a few years to, not years, it's gonna take me a few months to, to learn this coding thing and change what I'm doing and, uh, and, and be able to get the code from each script and recode it uh, so you guys can use it. Right? If I make changes on that platform, I'm gonna have to basically figure out how to put it on this platform again for you guys, right? So. Yes, that's, a, that's an interesting topic, uh, or we could all just go over to that platform, it really depends, it really depends how good the platform is. I've been using it a little bit, it looks fantastic, honestly, it looks very, very good, but uh, there, there are a few kinks, it is very new, it's a startup, uh, it could just, they, I think they have funding, I don't know, um, but looks very, very promising, I'm in it early, gonna be good, uh, and I'm obviously gonna share all that with you guys as well, right? Uh, apart from that, that's basically the video, guys. I did just want to say, uh, before we go, we are right at this resistance line here. Last time we tested it, uh, this time we're, we're just kind of sitting on it. It does look kind of trappy right now where we finished above it and we could just dump, dump a Thonio from here. But uh, with, with that in mind, I would say, yes, we're looking for a signal here. Yes, we're gonna wait. Um, for this trade, I think I am gonna follow Binance, um, but, you're welcome to follow Bybit as well. Obviously, Bybit is looking the more profitable one right now. It depends how they're going to go. Uh, I don't personally trust Bybit that much. I haven't used them. That's why I don't trust them. I trust BitMEX more than Bybit. Uh, but <laughs> BitMEX have been going down a lot, so I don't trade on that platform anymore, right? Um, in terms of Bybit, they, they look pretty good. They look pretty good. It just looks a little bit simple for me. I would like a, an advanced trading thing on their platform, uh, just for someone like me that, uh, that likes to have everything up. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. But this is this is more profitable. You can see, right? Uh, this is starting with boom, 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 four hundred dollars, right? And if we had started from uh, where is it? Is that four hundred dollars? That can't be right. That can't be right. What what did we have here? For oh yeah, this, these were the base settings. But if I go up to twenty eight point seven five, we get like ridiculous girthy gains. Do we? What? That didn't work. Seven million. Seven million. Oh no, I used that wrong, I did that wrong. <laughs> I did stop plus, I was gonna go for leverage, there we go. Uh, 2875, uh, thank you for watching this video so far. I know there's probably not many of you left, um, but thank you for watching. Oh, we're talking about, we're talking about a billion dollars right here, in a year. 
<laughs> Obviously, that's not correct, guys. We would move the market and they would counter trade us if we had that much money. And I do expect to get to that point eventually. But for now, for now, we're just going to ride this up and see what happens. Uh, if we do look at the breakout machine, the, the things are slightly different. You can see here, right? Our threshold is still 75. Um, but this is different and we also don't have our, our selling points with HVP as well because we don't usually get up there on this uh, that much right to sell so I don't have that as a factor I just use the MACD instead and I've also changed the the settings of the MACD and everything as well so this is it's almost a completely different indicator but it is kind of the same so uh, what we're doing here is essentially avoiding a lot of the losses and getting the girthy gains on the day of God right uh, apart from that guys that's basically the video I do just want to say please like and subscribe if you haven't already um, also uh, feel free to share this in any of those telegram groups you know those public ones that you don't really care about but you're in anyway just just put a little link in there be like look I found this guy he's pretty good and you'll help me out massively and I'll massively appreciate it right um, also if you send me <laughs> if you send me a picture of you doing that on telegram I'll give you like a, <laughs> I'll give you a week with my indicators for free how's that right so apart from that yep yeah, that's the video I'll see you guys in the next one uh, like and subscribe leave a comment to enter the giveaway and the giveaway is going to take place uh, afterwards on telegram as well so I'll see you guys after that peace and goodbye from Bitcoin beats Touch me, touch me.